there is a story told of a thief who was caught in the act of stealing and was brought before the king. The king was a just man, but the punishment in that country for stealing was death. And the man had to be hung. The man was given one night before he could be hanged in order to consider what he had done, in order to repent for his misdeeds. And as the man was awake at night, he requested for a meeting with the king before he could be hanged. The king met him because it was his last wish. And he told the king that he had a secret. The king obviously wanted to know what that secret was. And so the man said, my father gave me the seed of a mango. And when I plant it into the ground, a mango tree will shoot up overnight. A mango tree filled with mangoes and the seeds of that mango tree can be taken and fed into the ground. And again, we have a number of mango trees in the kingdom. The king was very excited and happy, wanted to see if the man was telling another lie. And so, at night, he took him along with his courtiers and all the other prison guards to a place where he could plant his seed. Before the man planted the seed, he told the king, there is only one condition for this event to take place, and that is, this seed must be planted by a person who has never stolen anything in his life. The king looked around him and invited the first courtier. But the first courtier said to him that when he was a child, he had stolen something. A second and a third and a fourth, and no one could be found who had not committed thievery, who had not stolen something in his life. What is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that it is very easy for us when we are caught in a dilemma to think of creative solutions to save ourselves. We think of excuses at the drop of a hat and so easily when it comes to something that is temporary and passing and impermanent as this life that we have. In the gospel reading of today, Jesus speaks about a thief who was working for his manager and when he was caught, the manager wanted to dismiss him from his service and would give him three days to make amends. The man invited all the debtors of the manager and began to say to each one, how much they owed the manager. And the manager said, we owe 10. And the man said, take your bill and write down 5. Another said, I owe 8. And he said, take your bill and write down 4. A third said, I owe 6. He said, take your bill and write down 3. And Jesus points to this shrewd thief who wanted to protect himself, who wanted to provide for him when he was out of a job, so the three who were debtors of his manager would regard him with confidence. The three who were debtors of his manager and whom he had forgiven the debt, which was not his to forgive, but that of the manager, would be friends with him when he was out of a job and help him. And Jesus says, how easily the children of this world are able to make these quick decisions. How easily the children of this world are able to engage in dishonest means simply to protect their future, simply to save themselves. How much more must a child of light, how much more must a child of the kingdom, how much more must a child who is focusing on the internal heaven and on the permanent heaven and on the permanent life hereafter be good with regard to God. It is so easy for each one of us to make protection for ourselves, 
to provide for our future in this temporary, impermanent and passing world? What are we doing to provide for ourselves in the world which is to come? And we can do this provision for ourselves in the world that is to come by living this life as if we were in the next. By living this life in a selfless manner. By living this life in a manner which is honest. By living this life in a manner which is dedicated to what we are called to do. We must avoid looking at the dishonesty in the world. We must avoid looking at the corruption in the world. We must avoid looking at the injustice in the world and be negatively influenced by it. No. We focus on ourselves, on our justice, on our integrity, on our honesty. We focus on the present so that when we look at ourselves in the present, our future is assured. St. John Berkman's, a Jesuit saint who died when he was very young, had a motto by which he lived. And the motto was in three Latin words which said, RJ quod argis. And RJ quod argis in English means, do what you are doing. If you are listening to me at this moment, listen to me. If you have to go on an errand somewhere, go on that errand. When you are at work, be faithful to your work. When you are at home, be faithful to your family. When you are praying, be faithful to God. When you are eating, be faithful to your food. The larger majority of us are living tomorrow. And today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Others have too many regrets about the past and the past is never present. The past is the past and cannot be present. As a matter of fact, in Hindi, when I use the word kal, which means tomorrow or yesterday, you will never know to which I am referring unless I use the verb. Michael Gayatha, which means I went yesterday. Michael Jaunga, the tense determines when I am gone or whether I am going. So Kal by itself can mean either tomorrow or yesterday because Kal is no Kal. There is no tomorrow, there is no yesterday, there is only the moment. And so we take to heart the motto the dictum of John Berkman's R.J. quote Argis. We do what we are doing. We live so fully in the present that there is no scope, there is no time, there is no indication at all of regrets about the past or obsession with the future. Will you live in the now? Will you live in the present?